Billy here. I'm in Rocky Top. Actually, I'm Greater Rocky Top. Greater Rocky Top. Got a hotel room here by the week. Not bad. It's like the third place I went to. I didn't think it was open. I went to this one over here. This is nice. I can see that. Looks like it's been newly renovated. Very small rooms. Two forty a week. That's cheap. I've been paying between two forty and three forty a week for the last eight or ten years all over the country. Cheapest I could find. These other places that I had been staying at went up to six hundred. It's just greed. This place is still two forty. They're all right, but they were full. They said this one's open. I didn't even go there because it looked like it's uh, totally being either torn down or renovated. Can't tell. But they said they're open, so I went there and they gave me one for 280. It's a big room though. Nice air conditioner, newly renovated. They're renovating the rooms one by one, but they got the dumpster and all the parts and the old toilets and furniture all laying out in front. So it looks like a dump. But it's okay. This place around here is crack central. Oh, freaking zombies everywhere. Awful. I put a bunch of padlocks on the back of my truck so it made it a little harder to get into. The tailgate didn't have a lock and the camper lid didn't have a lock, so I I got a real hillbilly looking now. I got uh, padlocks stuck, <laughs> four padlocks on it, two on the tailgate and two on the on the lid. Yeah, it's okay. It's not a pretty truck anyway. I'm gonna need a master cylinder for it now. The brakes are getting weird on me. <laughs> and being as it pops out of first when you down when you downshift, because the tranny's weak, and the ignition switch, I gotta get a screwdriver and reach under the dash. So that's not optimal. I can't drive around with no brakes with that. <laughs> My other options for stopping are uh, too difficult to attain. So I'll fix it. I get my tooth fixed too. In other building news, I smacked myself in the puss. Uh, second time since I had my teeth fixed. I've had people comment on my teeth uh, a long time ago when I first started vlogging. Yeah, I, uh, I fell down on my bicycle when I was 12 and broke out my front tooth, broke it corner of it off and broke it out. My mom put it in a hole and shoved it back in it. It worked. And then, well, the dentist that uh, fixed it said, uh, this might last uh, a few weeks, might last a few years, no guarantees. And he mixed the, uh, the colorant up real bright yellow. He was a sadist. He's a good dentist, though. He said, you're not going to brush your teeth, so I'm going to make it nice and yellow, so when the rest of your teeth get yellow, it'll match. Nice guy. So I had this big, crooked yellow tooth in front all my life. Never bothered me much. Until I was in my 50s, and it broke loose when I bit into a goiken. Like biting into a nice, crunchy goiken. Yeah, I like that. Never had any problem, but this time I had a homemade Russian pickle and it wasn't crunchy like a gherkin, it was kind of rubbery. That was real rubbery. I think there's something wrong with it. It's freaking like rubber. Anyway, it did my tooth in. Went to a dentist there in Sevastopol. I told him the story about how my mom shoved it back in. Good Russian dentist, he said, she did not get it straight. He fixed it. Glued it in with some sort of plastic band behind it. Good job. But then a couple of years later, I'm uh, taking a control line off a machine and some lazy millwright or some lazy sub millwright didn't uh, use a die to bend the tubing. It just kind of pushed it around and then tied it together. So when you untie it, it's like a leaf spring and it popped out and smacked me right in the mouth. And broke it loose again just a little loose 
And a couple of days ago, I reached in the back of my truck to grab a grab something with a handle and I pull up it was real heavy and the handle popped off and I smacked myself in the mouth pow broke it the rest of the way loose it didn't come out but uh, when I talk I feel it rattling right now it jumps up and down and makes a clicking noise in my ears when I talk nice and it moves around and it works its way down then when I close my mouth I have to do it very carefully I have to like chatter and wiggle my bottom jaw to get it to go back up into position because otherwise it'll bind up oh man it hurts so i gotta find a dentist and get it fixed somehow as cheaply as possible another nice expense but uh i gotta get that fixed but i got connections around here good friend of mine knows everybody everything around here he grew up here great guy he told me uh, where I should go. I'm going to check it out this week. Probably Tuesday or so. I could show you something real funny, but I'm not going to. I don't to gross people out. I pull my lips back and you can see my tooth, and I close my bottom jaw, and it, it flips out like a little trap door. I'll spare you. Anyway, that's it for the building news. I'm getting there. It's all going to be all right. I saw my kids on uh, WhatsApp this uh, today at around noonish. They were at the beach. They couldn't hear me, but it was good to see all three of them. The ex missus just handed the phone to them. If I call at the right time, she'll do that. But uh, that was good, at least I saw him for the first time in a while. So what's been going on in the news? I don't know, I've been a while very much. A lot of things are coming out, a lot of good things. Seems to be uh, considerable advances in this information war in our favor. Still a lot of crazy stuff going on, but uh, the system people are going to double down. That's all they can do. Their identity's tied in with it. My friend and I were discussing this on the internets. And she came up with some great insights, which I never really thought of that much, focused on that, on it in that direction. Most of these people are college educated. And it's like, uh, I, I, I've often said uh, a college education in the U.S. is like a party membership was in the Soviet Union. It's your ticket that you get to have access and be somebody. And they went to college and they studied hard and they got that degree. And uh, they'll be damned if they're going to let somebody that didn't pay the price tell them anything. It's herbus. It really is. It's arrogance. It's a mean little girls club. And they trust the authorities because they're part of the system. They got a certificate for claiming themselves part of the system. And if you're not part of the system, well... You're a loser, and who's going to listen to you? doesn't have anything to do with logic or reason or logical consistency. Those are just magic words that they use to scare people. They'll start talking to you about peer-reviewed this and uh, studies show and experts say. Those are magic words. Those are supposed to scare you. Like the shaman uses his ogata boogata because somebody said that throwing their daughters in the volcano didn't make a good crop last year. Who are you? You don't talk to spirits. You don't know how to perform rituals. You're not of the certain tribal bloodline that can be a shaman. Boogada boogada. Should we have compassion for these people? Should we ridicule them? Should we continue to try to uh, 
engage with them. That's pretty futile. Because you don't know the magic ooga da booga word and you're not even smart enough to be scared of it. Experts say I gotta do a lot of maneuvering because there's there's so many crackheads around here. And for some reason selfie spit sticks offend them. Yeah. I, I started making this video quite a while ago and I had to erase it because somebody ran up and started yelling shit at me. They really get aggressive sometimes. There's something they're not used to in the neighborhood or doesn't belong here. <sighs> There's a good one uh, that my friend posted about how uh, these kinds of people I'm talking about, uh, one of them posted, uh, how can you say that you did your research? You don't even know what research is. <laughs> and then they go on to talk about logical consistency and peer reviewed this and all the studies and all the ugga da booga da words. That's all they are to them. But well, people have done that. They just don't believe that you could have because you don't have a party membership. Oh, you don't have a degree. Booga da booga da. And reading this this uh, post, this uh, I don't know. It's supposed to be a meme, I guess. The other side isn't very good with memes. It's uh, a strange feeling reading it because it could just perfectly be applied to them and then it would be true. But they're applying it to us. They're applying it to people who want to tell the truth, to try to frighten us, to dress us down, to humiliate us. What happens when you get an overload of irony? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I read a book. This is this has happened twice. Once back in the 90s. I think it's back in the early 90s. I used to uh, babysit for a friend so they could go have a night out. They had a, they had a Down syndrome child. He was 12 years old, highly functional, but somebody had to watch him. I'd watch him. And they had a library. The kid amused himself. He didn't like me much. He didn't very much, I don't think. So he just stayed in his room. And uh, sweet. Uh, this friend had an extensive library. And I went through their books and uh, grabbed one that I thought would be interesting. Don't usually do the fiction. But this one looked like it was some sort of parody of, uh, of the Christian literature that was going around at that time. Christian fiction. There's this book making circles back then called uh, This Present Darkness. Ugh. And this appeared to be a parody of that. And I started reading it. I'm not kidding you. It wasn't a very, very big book, and I read fast. I got like a third of the way through it before I realized it was freaking serious. It wasn't a parody. They were, they were trying to, you know, do a work like that or maybe even top it. That's a weird feeling when you're reading something somebody wrote and you think it's a parody and then you get a third of the way through it and finally figure out this guy's freaking serious it's, it's just like it's it's stunning it's a weird feeling and it's the second time that happened because once I read a, a book by a, a MIT professor actually he wasn't even a professor yet he is now I think John Kenneth Press I remember his name he wrote a book called Culturism you want a good laugh look at that one you're starting to see real obvious problems with multiculturalism. And he wasn't academic enough to know to keep his freaking mouth shut. He actually thought he could fix it. He could spin things and invent a new kind of multiculturalism that he called culturalism. And he wrote a book about it. And I could tell the book was written by his students. You know, he gave us the chapters were not even chapters. There were, there were parts of chapters that were obviously written by two or three different people with different levels of 
education and intelligence and command of the English language. But overall, is basically he was trying to advocate the introduction of some sort of American version of uh, a Stalin cult of, cult of personality. And he thought it was a new thing that he invented <laughs> to get us to multiculturalism. I, I I actually for a while thought that it was a parody too, and and and, and uh, I'm reading it. I thought it was as as a real. It really was what it said it was, and I got going. Thought, oh great, this is a parody. This is hilarious. <laughs> and I got to the part where uh, he wanted to put monuments in all the cities, great big giant statues, to to some leader. You know, so the youth would have something to focus on and, and build a culture. And then he was wringing his hands and trying to decide who, who should it be. And he, his, his candidate was Samuel Gompers. <laughs> Holy shit! It's, just, it's an old wobbly from back in the 20s that got thrown in jail for, uh, you know, subversion, I think. You know, the man wasn't even a good communist or socialist. He's, he's a failed socialist of some kind. But he was John Kenneth Press's hero. <laughs> he's wanting to put monuments to him all over the country. And then he caught himself because Samuel Gompers was white. So we can't have that. So then he settled on Malcolm X. You're going to have Malcolm X monuments all over the country for people to worship. But he's freaking serious. He's dead freaking serious. What a silly bastard. You look at their ideas. These people are in a fish fishbowl. They're in an aquarium. They're in an academic aquarium. Just like the military industrial complex. You have these generals, and I've met them, and I've been around them, and I've watched them going ape shit. And I, I made one of them so mad. I, I talked about it in my previous videos. I made one of these guys so mad just by saying no once. I didn't even say no, I implied no. <sighs> he ordered me to do something that was totally unnecessary. And then he, he came up and, uh, I told you, and goes with it again. And I just said, I heard you. And the guy about started crying. He was so mad he couldn't control himself. This is, this is a colonel. He wasn't a general, he's a colonel, retired colonel. These people grow up in a family. They go to West Point. They don't know or associate with anybody that didn't go to West Point. Generation after generation. They're aliens. They're nothing at all like me and you. They're nothing at all like us. They don't understand us at all. They think of us as worms, expendable worms. They're all about the think tanks. They're all about the stock portfolio and the contracts. They're all about, uh, the only thing that they can understand is a little petty shit, like, you know, having your creases straight and your shoelaces tied properly. They're a different breed. They're the people that are in command of our military. <laughs> all these little subcultures have people that just go off into different shades and different flavors and different varieties of herbis. Isolation in their own Oh, well, they're they're high on their own fumes, and they and they're surrounded by a cloud of their own fumes, and and they really get their heads so far up their ass they're not even functional anymore, especially the military high-ranking military guys that are into that. I I've seen a lot of them. Cause I worked for a logistics company that loved hiring retired colonels and generals and put them in charge of things because of their connections and their familiarity with procedure. But they didn't pay very much. They only gave them like a hundred grand a, a year, plus all expenses. Most companies were paying at least twice that. So we got the bottom of the barrel. We got the ones that were just completely batshit crazy. Nobody else could stand them. Nobody else wanted them, not for any price. They didn't care about their connections. They didn't care about uh, their familiarity, the procedure. It wasn't worth it because they were nuts. They couldn't get along with anybody. They spent all their time screaming at people. God, and KBR hired them though, and I had to work for them. 
I learned how to dance on their heads, and so should you. But that's an extreme case. The military is an extreme case. Academics are a different kind of extreme. And these are the people that have access to platforms and have access to uh, major media and that have influence in things. Just saying. How's that going to change? It can, and it will. Eventually it'll collapse. Unfortunately, it'll take a lot of the good stuff down with them. We let them. I'm going to keep this one short. I'm tired. I'm just babbling and rambling. I hope somebody found it amusing at least. It's a beautiful, beautiful sky, beautiful landscape around here. Smoky Mountains. It's been raining every freaking day here. Oh, that's another thing. I don't have any windshield wipers. <laughs> uh, the bushings wore out. They keep popping off the arm. I mean, the inner, inner arm. And I can't get bushings anywhere. Nobody has them. I'm going to have to make some. I work in a factory. I can make some bushings when I have time. But right now, it's Rain-X. Highly recommend it. Rain-X. You apply Rain-X to your windshield. As long as you're going about 30 miles an hour or so, it blows the rain right off and you see perfectly. Unfortunately, in town, when you're not going 30 miles an hour, it gets kind of hard to see. But, you know wing it <laughs> got to do what you got to do gosh I feel like such a schlep everything goes wrong but money answers all things and now I'm back in it oh get everything all shored up eventually and get everybody paid back Can't think of anything else to talk about. I hadn't been putting videos out like I should, but uh, wireless is sketchy. And now I now now I now I'm good. I'll get some. I'll get some out. I got some things I want to say. I want some videos I want to make. That I need to make. But from Rocky Top, Tennessee, at this lovely hotel, in the process of being renovated. I get to still my garbage out the door into the dumpster here, right? Works pretty good. Uncle Billy. There's it is. Luna. Uncle Billy signing out.